she moved to Harlem in the Harlem Parents Committee. And then she was part of the organization of the African American Unity, which was the organization that Malcolm X started. And you see the historic picture that has gone all around the world when Malcolm X was assassinated is Yuri Kochiyama, who was the woman with the scarf on her head who was cradling him in, at the Audubon Ballroom. And I, I have a personal relationship with Yuri. She's my, as was my mentor, and is my mentor as a teenager. She and my mother and other community women in Harlem organized around um, going to school around the school board in the Harlem Parents Committee. So um, we have a very long and fond relationship and I'm very appreciative to her for all of her years, her 60 years, uh, 65 years of community service to communities of color in New York City and now in California. So without further ado, let me introduce Ms. Ms. Yuri Kochiyama. to 
build U.S. military bases. These are only but a few of the things that our so-called U.S. government did. And feeling no qualms of any kind of wrongdoing. I hope some of you will read War Churchill's book about, I can't think of the name, does anyone remember that, right, that's right. the chickens coming home to roost, you must all read that book, for he tells it like it is what America has done. But um, now we're glad that all of you can learn all the diff different ethnic studies. I didn't even know until Nadine told this morning that there was Mideast studies, because in my time there was only black studies, Puerto Rican, or Mexican studies, and Asian American studies. Um, black student unions popped up in many campuses. Once they were just social, they became very, very political. Latino groups, both Chicano and Puerto Ricans, also began organizing Mecha or the Young Lords. And I've heard this name from way back. Uh, Asian uh, activists started it in California and New York. Uh, there was a pasta, uh, the Filipino group, what was it? KDP. Uh, there was IWK from Chinatown, New York. G.K. Ram, a Cambodian group. There was also a Thai group, I can't think of the name. There was a group called Vietnam Patriots. And they certainly surprised both the movement and the police by taking over the Vietnam mission in New York. Nine Vietnamese flew in from nine different areas and took over. Uh, U.S. authorities began to start worrying that the activists were going maybe too far, taking over embassies and mission. Uh, and, they, and the U.S. government felt that the movement was posing a threat to the U.S. government. This is to show how active uh, uh, the activists were back in the 60s. The Panther Party, because of its rapid growth of members, was immediately targeted to be crushed. And I think you know that about 36 Panthers were killed by Pete. Um, by the end of the 60s, however, many black leaders were assassinated. People like Medgar Evers, Malcolm X, and Martin Luther King. And they are people that brought almost a whole new structure to the movement. Also, John F. Kennedy and Robert Kennedy were also assassinated in the 60s. And Robert Williams, the radical NAACP president of North Carolina, had, had to escape for his life, and he went to China where he was given asylum. So the 60s was certainly a very, very active time. It was sizzling. Sukarno, the brilliant architect of the Van Dam Conference, the first international Asian-African conference, became a victim of the U.S. coup. Local struggles became international. The world's main contradiction became obvious. U.S. imperialism against third world nations. And leading the third world was that tiny but mighty nation, Cuba,
standing divine. 